sexual orientation is determined, whether it be heterosexual or homosexual, um, at the time of birth or certainly very soon thereafter. The autoacoustic emissions that we measured in opposite sex twins, the females that have male co-twins, were actually like those of other males, not like those of females. That was rather uh, perplexing. And the, part of the reason that's perplexing is we know from other evidence that autoacoustic emissions are reasonably stable through life so that the emissions that you measure in young adults are very representative of what they had at birth. So why should a newborn female who had a male co-twin have weak autoacoustic emissions, autoacoustic emissions that look like those of males rather than those of other females? Well, it turns out that in the literature there of, um, on uh, hormone effects, there's any number of examples in non-humans of effects that are just like this. The, what happens is that the females get exposed to the androgens, male sex hormones, that are produced by the male fetuses that they, they're sharing the intrauterine environment with, and these females get masculinized on uh, various uh, traits and measures because of that exposure. So the question was, is it possible that our opposite sex twins, our females who have male co-twins, might have weak masculine-like autoacoustic emissions because they got exposed to the androgens being produced by their co-twin brothers. I don't have any direct evidence for that, but I do know that these women are also masculinized on a number of other different characteristics. There are some very characteristic uh, differences in dentition, the way the teeth fit into the jaw, uh, marked sex differences in that. And uh, females with male co-twins have dentition that's like that of males, not like that of females. And there are a couple of other measures that um, were like our autoacoustic emissions, masculinized. It occurred to me that perhaps non-heterosexuals also would show some uh, differences in their autoacoustic emissions. So we started another study in which we measured autoacoustic emissions in heterosexuals and non-heterosexuals. And uh, sure enough, what we found was that homosexual and bisexual females have autoacoustic emissions that are shifted in the male direction. They are masculinized. We don't know what prenatal mechanisms exactly are responsible for that masculinization, but we're reasonably confident that it is prenatal because we know from other measures of autoacoustic emissions that the autoacoustic emissions that are present in young adults, which is what we measured, um, are very representative of what exists in newborns. So the implication was pretty strong that somehow homosexual and bisexual females were getting exposed to higher than normal levels of androgens than was true for typical females. And this was going on during prenatal uh, development. Any human behavior as complex as sexual behavior is bound to have multiple contributing components to it. There are going to be some environmental experiential contributions there's, and there's going to be some physiological, biological contributions. My belief is that the latter, the physiological, biological contributions are overwhelmingly stronger for most non-heterosexuals than are the other contributions. Um, 
it's very unlikely that you can develop any kind of a training program that's going to change someone from being a non-heterosexual into a heterosexual. Just think about it. What kind of training would you have to change a heterosexual into a non-heterosexual? It's just um, not um, scientifically very appealing. It just seems quite nonsensical. Our auditory research is just one example of um, studies that have shown physiological measures that appear to be innately different in heterosexuals and non-heterosexuals. Uh, for example, handedness. Uh, homosexual males and homosexual females are much more likely to be left-handed than are heterosexuals. Uh, puberty has an earlier onset, about three months earlier, in homosexual males than in heterosexual males. Um, heterosexual, uh, homosexual males at birth tend to weigh less but have heavier placentas than do uh, heterosexuals. And uh, then finally there is the fraternal birth order effect, which is a remarkably compelling fact that the chance of any male being homosexual goes up by about a third for every additional older brother that he has born to that same mother. Mm -hmm.